Is everybody back? I hope everybody's back. Let's get uh, let's get Curtis back on this thing. All right. Is he there? We're waiting. Yes. That worked. And we're back. <laughs> Nice. You only playing that? That was it? Coming back into the show? Just that thing? Well, I wanted to get back into the conversation. I'll, oh. maybe, play it. I'll maybe play it later. Okay. <laughs> I mean, probably people are here to see you play music, maybe. That is, that is undetermined yet. <laughs> <laughs> that is. That I'm is. not sure. I'm not convinced that that's the case. So, uh, Paul, one of our one of our one of my friends, Paul, and you know Paul. He yeah. he he made a comment before we left for the break, talking about uh, that we're Ga LA Galaxy traitors. What do you have to say about that? Yeah, well, I only have a couple of things to say about that. You know, <laughs> my my gear is all in my house, so I'm gonna wear I'm gonna wear it like uh, like somebody in the '80s. Nice, nice. Your hair's getting a little long there. You're not having shallow cut your hair? Uh, no, 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 absolutely not. No, no, Abs no, no, no. She wants to. She does want to. Uh, it, it looks like you're going to be in ride or something, a blur. You're going to be like it, <laughs> swerve know. driver or something. <laughs> oh my gosh, swerve driver. Uh, so, uh, so when I was in college, I was, uh, I was, I went down to the, uh, to the, the El Rancho Market supermarket in Malibu. I was, I was going to Pepperdine, and I went down to the El Rancho Market, and I got myself a sandwich. And I was sitting in there, and I was listening to um, the the uh, KXLU radio station, which is out of Loyola Marymount. Um, it's a huge college station, super influential um, radio station here in LA. Um, like probably like for. Um, Maybe for uh, for for a certain a long amount of time, that was like kind of like one of the most like a, like adventurous like alternative counterculture music spots, and so uh, so I'd listen to it all the time, and so but it was also like very much one of those like one of those uh, uh, like college stations where you know the the DJs are got like just a gnarly attitude you know, and so everything is just like super kind of like you know, anti DJ, you know, so they're like, so they're sitting there and, and uh, they play a bunch of songs and it's like, okay, well, um, yeah, we're back. This is KXLU. Um, <laughs> we're, uh, you just heard, um, I don't know, I don't know what you heard, a couple songs. And then there was, you know, Squat Thrust was in there somewhere. And, you know, just like all these like super random, like, like weird, <laughs> weird ass band names. And then the guy's like, Okay, well, um, we've got some tickets to see um, for you to see Swerve Driver and Medicine at the Whiskey tonight. If you if you want them, just call us at three one zero whatever you know whatever it was, and you know maybe we'll give them to you. And so I'm like, so I'm sitting in my car and I'm like, oh, I want to go to this show. I'd love to get free tickets. And like, so I go and like I, I run over to the the payphone. This is like you know this is in the analog years. And uh, so I go over to the payphone and I call the I call up the KXLU and I'm like, I'm like, hey, you know, do you still have those tickets to see a Swerve Driver in Medicine? And then, and then the person on the other line is like, um, yeah, um, you know, what's your name? And I'm like, oh, my name's Wayne. He's like, okay, so they're gonna be a will call for you. And I'm like, great, thank you so much. Okay, bye. You know, it's just like really quick. You know, just, just Wayne. Yeah, just Wayne. Totally. So I went to the show that night, and I don't think uh, I don't uh, I I couldn't get find anybody to go with me because I, I can't remember why there was somebody uh, I don't know anyway. But um, <clears throat> so I went to the show, and it was and Medicine. It was the greatest. I mean, I don't know if people who are watching know the band Medicine, but that is a band that is talk about an underrated bands in the world. You know, Wango oh, was 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 underrated, but they had a certain level of like popularity. I mean, they had like you know, songs in, you know, movies and stuff. And, you know, of course, Danny Elfman became a huge star and all that stuff. But Medicine is like one of the greatest L.A. bands that almost nobody has ever heard of. Yeah, it's weird. 
It's weird. And, um, but they put on like an insanely amazing show that night. And I'm so glad that I was happened to be listening to KXLU in my car <laughs> during lunch at that <laughs> at the El Rancho supermarket. Nice. My only my only time I ever won tickets myself. We've won some stuff on KCRW. Meg, Meg, Meg and her friend Berta win shit all the time. Yeah. Um, I never win anything, but the one time I won was pretty rad. I, I was listening, getting ready to go to school, and Rodney, or uh, yeah, no, it was uh, it was Richard Blade on K Rock. <laughs> he was given, yeah, yeah, that guy. He yeah. was giving away tickets for David Bowie, the Glass Spider tour. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember yeah. that. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so I I got like fourth row at Anaheim Stadium. Whoa. Um, home to your angels uh and it was it was rad as david bowie i mean you know what the, and i'm fourth and a free and i'm right down there and i'm like you know 15 and i'm seeing david bowie that was pretty cool is it bowie's birthday today so shirley lorraine says it's his birthday today Does that mean bowie it makes sense yeah it makes sense that's that's oh. why you know um so yeah so <laughs> your, your hair's it looks nice though man maybe don't cut it maybe Maybe let it get a little. I'm gonna like I'm the old days. give it a shot. See what happens. I don't know. I don't know what you know. It, I mean, I kind of. It kind of seems like it doesn't really matter. Like, oh, it's Richard Blade's birthday today. Is, oh, it's is Richard what Blade. Is. Wow, that's a. That's yeah, a David Bowie's birthday is like January eighth or something like that. Um, hmm. yeah. yeah. I should probably not know that, but I know that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was. Uh, you know. David Bowie, I, I, I'm not like, well, first, let me let me ask you, so because you have so many favorite bands. Um, and let's just talk about some of the, you know, some of the uh, uh, of the big ones. I know you're, you're, you know, you're a big Bowie fan, but you're also and even you're an even bigger Wilco fan. Mm, I think, yeah, no, I mean, or yeah. Equal. well, they're di totally different. You know, yeah. they're so different. I mean, Bowie has been my whole life. Yeah, Wilco's Wilco's been most of my adult life, and Meg and I have shared Wilco together since we've been together, which is great. Um, since since the early '90s when Wilco kind of started, we've kind of followed that band. Mm -hmm. So I do love them, um, you know. And again, it's like you can, you know, um, Bowie. Since I was a little kid, The Clash, you know, that kind mm -hmm. of thing. Um, for the big bands, I, I have so many different kinds. It's so hard, you know, when people say, "What's your favorite?" I can't, you know, I've got friends that say, oh, this is for sure my all time favorite. It's very difficult for me to, you know, a as you, you know, change and grow in your life and get old or whatever, your, your musical things change, you know. But some bands that have sa stayed consistent, I would say Sonic Youth has stayed pretty consistent in my life for the last 20 some odd years. And um, replacements are always, I always go back to them. That was kind of, you know, a big, huge. The Smiths, I think, probably the most, um, that's the band that I probably listened to the most when I was 15, 16, 17. And I still listen to them today all the time. Yeah. Um, Jesus and Mary Chain. I mean, you know, you know, but not 80s. I mean, you know, right now, you know, I really love uh, Ty Siegel. I love, uh, I love a lot of the, uh, you know, garage rock that's psych kind of psychedelic garage rock that's going up around. LA's got some great shit happening. Mm -hmm. the, o the OCs are really fantastic and uh, Fuzz, which is another Ty Siegel kind of outfit. Um, but there's just so much great music. And, uh, you know, I just, you know, I don't really play favorites anymore, but um, I could rattle off, you know, yeah. tomorrow I could say Talking Heads, you know. <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, you know, it's it could go on and on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... <clears throat> The uh, it, it's interesting that you talk about very different styles of music and and their influences. I'm I'm, I'm thinking about like like what we were talking about earlier about like um, you know when I see like um, this uh, this recent piece um, uh, that we that I just showed everybody a, a little the one that's that, that's outside your house right now. Yeah. Um, this night has opened my eyes is the name of it. And um, Smith's reference on the song. <laughs> <laughs> nice um but you know um something like that that has a lot of element of like more noise and more chaos visually you know and then contrast that with some of your um 
your like like urban landscape photography, which is super like you know some of it is very clean and com it's very composed, yeah. you know, and there's a there's an order to it, and it's there's it's there's a there's a peacefulness to it as well. Um, yeah. And those, you know, I can I can see that in your work, um, and also, you know, understanding that like what you were talking about earlier about how, um, you know, music just comes comes through you, and it just and it happens in a way like you were talking about Jackson Pollock and the way that his work is, or the or the work that he became famous for, um, versus like a James Terrell kind of a thing, and that's in in, in your work as well. Um, you know, but your range of work is, is so diverse. Um, you've done, you know, video and you've done photography and, um, you know, a lot of different, you know, media. Um, what had, were you, were you drawn to one and then just decided to experiment or how did that develop for you? Um, well, when I was in, when I was in college, uh, kind of, you know, being an artist meant being a painter, I think, like when I, you know, I went to undergrad at Long Beach State and I thought, you know, I, I really thought that's kind of what the world of art was. But as I was there, I met so many different artists and this is back in the early 90s. I met so many artists that were doing so many different things. I was like, oh, I don't have to just be that. Mm -hmm. um, and I really like painting and drawing. I still I still draw a lot and um, I don't really show any drawings, but I, actually I showed a drawing in Mexico City, surprisingly, a couple months ago. But um, as part of a big group show that we were in with Jordan and Ray, but um, but I don't really draw that much, you know, for my work. I, I really, you know, for the last you know ten or so years, it's really been photography primarily. Mm -hmm. Before that, it was primarily video for about ten years. So for or about maybe fifteen years. So really, the last twenty five years, I've been really media based or you know photography or video. Mm -hmm. um, but I love, but again, kind of going back, I love it all. I mean, I, I, you know, I love painting. I love sculpture. Um, but I just don't want to do those that much. And so I'm attracted to photography. I think that, I don't know, you know, there's just something about that kind of that instant, that, that moment of that decisive kind of uh, moment of photography. And I, but I also like the planning that happens in photography and you know, and I, I, I do commercial photography every once in a while, too. I've shot award shows and stuff, as you know. But and that stuff doesn't excite me that much. I love taking beautiful pictures. But um, but I really like the whole process of kind of like I was talking about earlier of of finding these locations and, and taking these portraits of places that nobody looks at. And I was thinking about this uh, not too long ago. My stepdad and I, this filtered in my work somehow, and I didn't realize this until recently. He, he was a commercial real estate developer in the 80s when I was a teenager. And we would have, you know, like when I was tw 11, 12, 13, we'd have to drive around on weekends around Southern California looking for, he, you know, he built big strip malls and shit. <laughs> and um, so, so we drive around a lot. So there was this kind of scavenger hunt thing going on uh, that I, I didn't think about taking photos back then, although I had a camera at that time. Um, which my daughter has now, a Canon A1 film camera. I love that camera. Um, I didn't think about it, but I. But now that looking back on it, all that driving around in industrial parks and stuff, looking for locations to put pet smarts and shit, um, that kind of really filtered into what I do. It's it's strange. I find myself doing it now. I wouldn't take my kids along with me on these rides though, because it's <laughs> fucking boring. <laughs> <laughs> they'd kick you in the face yeah they'd be like what the hell um and there'd be a battle on music that we're listening to wherever we're going like i've asked cecilia my daughter if she wants to go with me and take photos like on a sunday morning when she's back from college and she's like no thanks <laughs> <laughs> all right i want a little dad daughter time but i guess that's not happening all right, whatever. <laughs> yeah well um so uh do you guys do you guys listen do you guys have some music in common though like do you guys uh, enjoy some listen i know you and graham do um what are some of the stuff that you guys enjoy together well grant graham is into a wide variety of things too i mean his big we you know um you know i i i loosely turn him on to things he he finds a lot of stuff on his own now he's really into king gizzard and the wizard lizard i know that name is really strange but they're a pretty rad band and uh, from australia 
but he's, you know, he's super into the White Stripes, uh, really into the Beatles. He has like every Beatles, he knows everything about the Beatles that there is to know. I have no, how he knows all this stuff and he hasn't even read books. Um, he, he really loves all the Beatles, even Ringo. I don't think he has any Ringo, he doesn't have any Ringo albums, but he has solo albums of George and John and Paul. He took all my Paul solo albums, they're in his room now, but. Oh, wow. I mean, you know, this is a kid who I went to, I go to record stores and he'll buy Muddy Waters records or, you know, like, you know, he, he'll, 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 you know, he'll, he, he's, it's great. He just has a wide variety. And, you know, my daughter, we, you know, she started her musical tastes off on the wrong foot. She started off kind of like in, well, not on the wrong foot. I, I shouldn't, again, I'm going to be a music snob. She, she, but she was super, <laughs> into, she was super into Taylor Swift. And you know, my I know wife's someone like, who's into Taylor Swift. Oh God! Well, listen, she's super talented, yeah, so I get it. But and my and Meg and I just kind of was what we were like. We'll let her roll with that. And um, but she has an amazing uh, musical taste right now. She really, um, she could totally be a DJ on a on a on a show. She she knows so so many more bands than I do. Like she's always every time she comes home, she's always got these crazy playlists that are really good. So I love that my kids turn Meg and I on to stuff now. It's great. We we share music all the time. We share, you know, old and new stuff with them, mostly old stuff, and they share new stuff with us. And I go to shows with both of them, which is great. It's so much fun. So I mean, one of my probably my favorite things as a, as a dad is to go to Dodger games mm -hmm. and to go to and to go to concerts with my kids. It's it's fantastic. <laughs> nice. I had to throw the Dodger games in there for you. <laughs> well, well, here's a question for you. So go Johnny Art asks, how long are the drives? Meaning like, uh, it seems like he, he's asking like, how long are the drives when you go and, and scout locations for your photography? How long are those sessions? Oh, I, I could be, I'll, I'll leave on a Sunday morning, like 8.30, 8 in the morning, the, the, the sun is right. And I'll be gone till noon or one. And I may take two photos. I mean, mm -hmm. I may have, I may come up with, I may have two photos. I, I probably took 30, but I probably have two that I'm going to be finalized. So, and um, yeah, I mean, it could be, it could be a long time or I could have a place scouted and that drive could be, but I like getting lost. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I really like just driving in around Los Angeles. There's so many little hidden, beautiful pockets of things that are just yeah. like, whoa, that shit's happening. Yeah. I like, I kind of like that and I can do, I can make an excuse to do it, right? I can't get lost any other time, but, but I can do it when I'm making my art and nobody can tell me I can't. So it's kind of nice. Unless my yeah. kids are with me and they'd be like, what the fuck are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> be like, I don't know, we're driving. <laughs> Why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? We're, we're just driving, that's what we're doing. <laughs> what are we looking for? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know yet, but when I find it, I'll let you know. <laughs> um, and, you know, art, art, and probably music is like this too. I feel like it's, I, I feel, because I see Graham, and, and I've seen you play too, but I've seen Graham like noodling around on the guitar and he's finding something, right? Yep. He's, he, there's, it's, it's there. It's like, it's like a, it's like a stone that you're kind of, you're chipping and fucking away at, right? And, <clears throat> Art is like that too. I think when you're a painter or a sculptor, it's clearly like that. When you're a photographer, it's like that too. It just happens a different way. You're just, you're, yeah, you're, somebody said, Chris is saying going on an adventure. You're just, you are, you're just kind of going on an adventure in photography. Yeah. And I feel like I'm a part of the city when I'm doing that too. I feel real connected to mm -hmm. LA that way. Yeah. Uh, I really, you know, and I, I actually, you know, what's funny is, you know, I really think of you as an L.A. artist, too, even though you lived in New York for a while and didn't make any music when you were there. Um, <laughs> I did make music. I, was, oh. I recorded a lot of this this album there. Well, yeah, that's bullshit. A lot of this album was recorded in New York. That's with, a bunch of bullshit because you're, you're a that's California. That's not bullshit at all. That's, that's the true. These are true things that happened. <laughs> no, I know you did that, but the songs are, I, I feel like you have this, you know, kind of like you go, who are quintessential Southern California people like Brian Wilson, you know, it's like, yeah. okay, that guy, you, to me, your voice and the way your sound is, mm -hmm. you know, obviously there's some, there's some English influences, some of your bands that you've loved, but 
But I really, I, you know, I always, whenever I hear your stuff, I always feel Southern California there. I feel that, that, you know, I just feel that. And, and that's what I want to, you know, kind of do as an artist too, is to, as a photographer, I want to, I, I love that feeling of being part of the city that you live in and that you're a part of. I think it's really cool. Yeah, I think, and I think a lot of art um, and music, you know, it naturally becomes that, you know, because of its place, you know, and because, um, uh, because of the, the, uh, Go Johnny R. Ask, can I hear your music on Spotify? Yes, go find Wayne Everett is the name. You can find it on Spotify. And Ask Your Mom says, I saw it, meaning uh, I saw him recording <laughs> in New York. At Henry Street, that's right. That was the name of the, that was the, name of the studio. It was on Henry Street in Lower Manhattan. Yeah, but your music doesn't sound New York, though. That's what I'm saying. True, true. I, I, I would argue that maybe um, some of the songs that were uh, the songs that were um, the the foundations of them that were recorded there might have had a little bit um, more of uh, a certain kind of spirit that I haven't done before, maybe mm -hmm. in music, and could have possibly been in inspired, you know, by that environment. But maybe, anyway. <laughs> uh, <laughs> maybe. But uh, but I think but I think a lot of uh, you know a lot of art just just naturally you know uh, is a reflection of of a place. Um, I, you know, I know like a lot of music for sure, you know, when, uh, people are, especially, when, you know, when we're teenagers and we're trying to learn how to like, you know, play music and, and, and music, you know, for me, and I know for a lot of people, it's like, it, it's an escape from, you know, something that's, that's terrible. Um, uh, and you know, you, you, you grasp onto something and you use it as, as a way to get out of a certain place. Yeah. But um, but maybe it's it's more of a um, it's more of a reflection of like a, a specific and uh, a, a, a even more specific environment rather than like the the town that you grew up in or the culture that you grew up in. Um, yeah. But, but even so, it's like you know, like I'm a Southern California guy, but you know, I love the um, that whole um, that that film series, the Up series. Yeah. You know? um, and. Um, it's the the I, the theory of, of of that that they explore in that movie is you know give me a child until he is seven and I will show you the man like in other words by the time you're seven years old so much of your personality and who you are is already is formed in those years mm -hmm. and I spent all of that time mostly in Connecticut a little bit in Hawaii and then Michigan but predominantly in um, in uh, in Connecticut when I was when I was very small and so we moved out here when I was about seven to California and even though uh, even though California I very much feel you know identify as being from from Southern California um, there's certain things that like I don't know how to explain it but there's certain things that don't feel like from here that are a part of me and ever since I saw that movie series I thought well maybe that's like a like the culture that I was in in Connecticut as a child or something. Mm, I don't know. Yeah. I'm not sure. Well, I've never been able to answer the question, but it's just I, an interesting thing to think of. I read someone asked if you were in New York during 9-11. You were oh, not. You were yeah, not. no, I was in New York from uh, 20, uh, 2013 to 2018. Yeah. Uh, we missed you when you were there, by the way. I said, I said, and, I, I and I missed you, you guys as well. I missed, I missed, uh, I missed it. But I, I, I really, I really enjoyed my time there and I, I, I did exactly what I wanted to do, which was to go and have like a New York experience. And I found the love of my life there, which, you know, True. even if I had a total disaster of a time would have made it all, all worth it. Um, yeah. But, um, <laughs> but uh, so, uh, uh, so yeah, so it was, it was a great experience. Um, yeah, I think place, music, and art, I think they have a big, I mean, when I think about, let's, let's take a band like the Smiths, man, dude, when I, when I first heard the Smiths, I was 15 years old, I was like, Manchester must be the coolest place, like yeah. that, I gotta go, that now, I didn't know it was this bleak industrial town, <laughs> in my mind, it was this magical, there was so many great bands from Manchester, hmm. you know, uh, Joy Division, I mean, a huge Joy Division fan, yeah. Huge, huge Smiths fan, New Order, all that. Um, and, you know, I just thought of this, and I really have always associated Johnny Marr and the Smiths with that place. 
And I think that you, you feel there, you feel that location, you feel the world that was around them in there. If, if they would have grown up in Southern California, they would have made different music. They just yeah, would have. For sure. For sure. And, you know, like it's, it's Brian Wilson. We'll go back, you know, you know, I know you, you know, I, I know you love Brian Wilson and, and, you know, if he wasn't in the Beach Boys, he probably would have been a lot better. But um, <laughs> <laughs> that that could be that could be a cool lame uh, scenario. Brian Wilson with the Beach Boys, uh, <laughs> cool. Clearly, the Beach Boys without Brian Wilson, not cool. Well, yeah, I mean, Mike Love, lame, super lame. Um, so yeah, I just, I feel like that Brian Wilson, you know, it, I just, I do love it when artists, we'll just say artists, musicians, artists, filmmakers, whatever it is. I love, you know, someone like Spike Lee as a filmmaker really captures, you know, I think of New York when I think mm -hmm. of Spike Lee, I right. think of nowhere, you know, um, you know, some, some filmmakers just have this place and time and, I, and not everybody, not every, not everything needs to be situated in a place. But I really do think that music has that possibility of, you know, when you think about like, um, you know, punk rock in the in the late 70s in, in Los Angeles, which mm -hmm. you and I both loved a lot of punk rock that came out of here. Um, and that that time period with, you know, X and Black Fa Flag and, and, you know, germs. I mean, I was like and, five years older or something, you know? I mean, I yeah. missed all that stuff because I was just too young. You know, I was yeah, we were barely just, too young. Yeah, just missed, but you know, caught the tail end of that. Yeah, Minutemen and all that. Um, but that that mo moment in time captured Los Angeles and Southern California at that time. And I just like it when 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 music and art can do that. It doesn't always have to do it, but I like when it does. And then there's a case to be made for when music is timeless. You know, like and and it could be anywhere. It could be you could experience it anywhere. You don't have to be. Um, you don't have to situate in a place, but I, I do like that it can have that ability that music can have that. It's pretty cool that it can. Um, and yeah. I, I think that happens in, in art too. I mean, I don't, I don't know art, you know, really that well. I mean, you know, I have friends like you who are in this, the scene and stuff and, and under, understand it and have a vocabulary and a, and a, and a, an aesthetic for it and an understanding of it. Um, but I imagine it's probably the same kind of a thing in the sense that like there's art that is made that, um, you know, uh, is so clearly made in a very specific moment. Like I think about like, you know, <laughs> I think about the eighties and I think of like Nagel, you know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the guy who yeah. did all the Duran Duran or something, uh, yeah. the Duran Duran covers or whatever, but he was like a fine artist, you know, at that time and, and or, fine artist or I don't know, whatever, yeah. that, you know, uh, and uh, he's kind of an illustrator, I, I would say. <laughs> illustrator, yeah, but yeah, but he, but you know, his stuff became like wildly popular at that time, and it's really associated with a very specific mm -hmm. time like that. You know what I mean? Or at least it hasn't risen to the the level of like, you know, it being sort of timeless or has been appreciated. Uh, I mean, it certainly it, it it has that aesthetic certainly has. Sure you know, has, you know, resurfaced again in, in some ways over the years, but, um, but not clearly not in a way that, that somebody thinks of his work as timeless, whereas they think of, you know, of, uh, of, you know, uh, a Pollock or a Terrell yeah. or, yeah. you know, um, you know, or in photography, like a, I don't know, an Ansel Adams or something. I don't know, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, listen, photography has to situate you in time somewhat. Mm. You know, when, but when I, my, my fine art photography, I don't want there to necessarily be a time. Mm -hmm. I, I do want there to be a place, but I don't, but I don't want there to be a time. Like it could happen. It could have happened 20 years ago. It could happen now. Yeah. I mean, I want the, but, but what's cool is I can never take the same photo twice. I always, I could go back to the same exact location and I could set up my camera and sh in the same spot to take take some shots and they're going to be different. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the light is going to be different. The, you know, whatever's happening and, you know, the space doesn't look the same. And that's, right. that just goes back to the way I make work where I'm collaborating with the environment around me in the city. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, and as a photographer, you just, you, you know, you, you take a lot of photos. I mean, there was one year where I took 12,000 photos. Wow. Just total. And, and you know, they're not all going to be masterpieces, just like music. You, you, sure. you create a lot of riffs probably that aren't all great, but yep. mm -hmm. so, you know, but you, but you, as an artist, you find out, you figure out what are the ones that, that speak to you first and that, you think are going to speak to other people. And I think that's what music does too, clearly, is, you know, you know, Graham, my son just, you know, wrote a song yesterday. He's like, yeah, I wrote these lyrics in 20 minutes. I'm like, sometimes that's the best thing. Like, j don't overthink it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, well, I think uh, uh, Paul Weller said, if, you know, famously, he wrote That's Entertainment. He wrote, I mean, he's still writing and has written, you know, I don't know, thousands of songs now. His his most popular song probably was something that he wrote when he was 20 years old, you know, and, uh, and took, what's that? Eight, and took eight minutes to write. He did, he said he wrote it when he was shit-faced drunk in a cab in 30, you know, and then in, in, and he got home and he took it, and in 30 minutes he had finished the song. And that's the entirety of the song. And it was the, the biggest hit that the jam had and you know, some of the stuff comes like that, you know, and uh, other stuff takes a lot uh, more work and, you know, trying to, you know, uh, it take 18,000, you know, uh, pictures or, or do, you know, 18,000 riffs in order to find something that's really going to strike you as something that you want to expand on or, or do something with. That's a high failure rate. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying that I took a lot of photos one year. It, it wasn't all about art, but but when it is about art, you know, you you definitely, um, you know, you you part of the art making process is is editing. Yeah, it's, it's figuring out what works and what doesn't, and and as you get better at it, as you as you get more accomplished you have a better sense of what's going to work and what's not. You don't question as much, like, is this good? But sometimes being out on the edge, sometimes not knowing what the fuck you're doing is good as well. Like sometimes, sometimes being, you know, part of being an artist sometimes is about, about taking chances and risks, Yeah. you know? And I, I like that about, about art and music. I love music that takes risks, right? That's like, whoa, that happened, right? Like, where did this come from? Like, you know, it's, uh, I, I like when bands take risks sometimes. It's like, you know, that, okay, this, this band now just did this. This is, this is amazing that they took this risk and they, and they um, broke, you know, like, oh, let's go back to Wilco. We talked about Wilco a little while ago. You look, they had two great albums before Yankee Hotel Foxtrot. Mm -hmm. But when that album came out, they took a lot of risks on that album. And I don't think they knew, you know, the record company didn't like it. This is, it's this, it's the age old story, right? And, but they knew there was something there. They didn't even know quite what it was, but they knew something was there that, that was going to work. And they took, they, they took chances and, you know, fuck shit up on purpose. And it was beautiful. Yeah. And, and, and that sometimes art needs to do that. Sometimes music and art and photography need to, need to fuck shit up to to you know kind of move forward it's like it's almost like you know just taking that next step right it's mm -hmm. like if we're, we're we're so planted sometimes in the same old thing and you know that's the advice that i always give to young artists and and filmmakers and photographers and you know i don't give it to musicians very much but you know <laughs> take some chances like do some things that are uncomfortable like is this gonna work like i don't you know and don't worry if it's wrong. Don't worry if it's like shitty because the shitty is gonna kind of get you further, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so that's that's part of one of the things I think that makes makes good art is to fuck up a lot and then and then figure out how to make that good, like how to how to build that forward, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think there's a there's a there's there's kind of like for me it seems like there's there's a maybe two main approaches to, to, to creativity, to making art. You've got the very much like a, um, you know, you're, in, you're inspired by something and you have a very clear vision of what it is and, and, you, you, and you craft it and you're, and you're a crafts person, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like you, you know what it's going to be and then the, the, the creative work becomes like, well, how do I hone this to be the exact thing that I'm envisioning, you know what I mean? And it's like I, I know what I what I need to get to, 
but I, I, you know, and I, I need to find the steps to get there, you know? Yeah. Whereas like there's, and then there's the other side of the coin where it's like, um, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna dive into this thing that seems interesting and then just fucking figure it out once I, once I get in there, you know what I mean? And see where it leads kind of a thing, you know? Yeah, and I like both um, ways. Do you, well, when yeah, you I, lock, I, when... I think that's a little bit too binary to kind of think of it like, like you're either one or the other, but that's always, that's kind of like the, the the struggle you know and that's why yeah. i think people can't can't you know it must be difficult for you to teach art because you you know what i mean it's like you can't you can't teach someone like their met their process or their method well here's the thing it I mean, is... you need some skills and like certain kinds of you know techniques and and you know ways to to you know to do achieve certain things if that's what you're looking for here's the deal people people want recipes mm -hmm. in life they want recipes true the yeah. thing about it is, is that when you make art, there the recipe you got to throw the fucking recipe out the window. Like mm -hmm. I'm not good with recipes. Like you, Meg will tell you, I'm not a good. I can't cook. <laughs> uh, just like, um, but 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 like following a pres prescriptive, I can tell you exactly how a camera works technically, mm -hmm. and yeah. I can and I can and I can use Photoshop with my eyes closed, right? And I can edit and I can do. You know, technologically, I can use all the tools. Mm -hmm. And you do have to learn them to, to create your craft. You have to learn all the tools, whether it's a guitar, mm -hmm. whether it's, you know, amps and, you know, and, and synths and whatever, and drums. You have to learn those tools. But yeah. there's, there's a point where you have to take the recipe, take that, that technical skill, and you have to put, put that on the back burner. And you really have to, you have to really kind of almost unlearn the thing. So you learn the skills to, to, to unlearn them mm -hmm. so that you can then, it's like hitting a baseball dude. Like, like Mike Trout doesn't go up to the plate thinking it, every little thought about, okay, the ball is gonna come out of the pitcher's hand and mm -hmm. it's gonna spin at a rotation of, and it's gonna, you know, curve this. He just hits the fucking ball. Right, he just sees right. it and hits it. A lot of hitters are like that, yeah. See it, hit it, but he's practiced over and over and over again mm -hmm. you know it's it was it's it was like kobe hitting shots or mj mm -hmm. you know that's so much practice and the practice then you can turn your mind off and become unconscious and i think art right. art has to the only way art exists really is when you're in that world when you're in the world of there's a recipe but you put that recipe over to the side and you just start doing it mm -hmm. and uh, maybe music is that way too. I think when it really hits, that's why seeing live shows is so great because mm -hmm. you're seeing that recipe thrown out the fucking window during the live show, right? It's... Yeah, and and certain, uh, well, certain. I, I think in terms of like uh, you, you're seeing the, a live performance, and you know people like uh, you know a, a different expression of like that thing that you heard that was recorded the record. You know what I mean? It's like you're mm -hmm. hearing. A different expression of that music, yeah. And and then there are other you know, some bands who you know improvise and do stuff like that. I've never been a, a fan of the Grateful Dead, really. Oh, but I know you like them. You love them. But <laughs> well, <laughs> but uh, but but I have a huge I have a huge huge respect for them because uh, I think one I don't know I was I remember in my when I was living in Long Beach I got sick and I was like just watching PBS stuff just like really. I don't know what was happening, but I was watching PBS and they were doing one of those like fun drives. And so they, and they were yeah. playing like a concert film of the dead. And I can't remember what it, what it was, but it was sometime in the, in the mid seventies, I think, or ah, shoot, I can't remember. Anyway, um, it was, uh, and I was, I was just like, there was nothing else on TV. So I was just like, okay, I'll just watch this for a little bit. And it was so beautifully musical and like, not wanky at all and no. like very like tasteful and really like you could tell like the, the the sort of craftsmanship part of it but you could also tell that they were like you could really feel that they were like listening to each other and maybe they were improvising i don't know i didn't i'm not wasn't familiar with their music to know whether they were for sure a lot of, a lot of improv improv going on with it, was, yeah. it was so cool and ask your mom uh says cornell 1977 <laughs> That's, yeah. that's my man Rob who that's my man Rob who uh, confirmed that I recorded this in uh in uh, Manhattan and also Rob look at this oh, look at Rob. Nice. <laughs>
<laughs> that's one of my prized possessions right there. Cornell 77 on vinyl. Uh, oh. Rob says, uh, widely considered one of their, uh, uh, their best shows. It, it is their best show. Well, and, it, and, and okay, so The Dead is a good example to bring up because, you know, just like improvisational jazz, I mean, right. they, they're a band that whether you like their, you know, Americana roots music or not, sure. um, that's fine. Um, or, or any of their singing style, that's fine. And, but just them as musicians, they are finding that place. Someone else commented here earlier. It's like following a, uh, what is it? It's like, I don't have my glasses on. This is good. Ivan. Uh, like, uh, it's following a regimen to obtaining skill to use in a situation that doesn't follow that regimen. Yeah. And yeah. the dead were, great that was the grateful dead. That was the grateful dead right there. Yeah. I mean, you know, just they, they had all the structure and then you just go on top of that structure. Mm -hmm. And uh, whether, you, again, it doesn't matter whether you, you uh, super dig their music or not. I mean, you know, Meg and I went and saw a bunch of dead shows. So when you see them live, there's a whole nother aspect that's happening there. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> <laughs> the, some illicit things that are occurring as some well. Chemical reactions occurring. Yeah, there's some chemical reactions and whatnot that are occurring that adds into this whole thing. But, um, you know, uh, it's, it's, you know, it, it's not even about, you know, like, it's just mu musicians have this ability, I think, with that, with that, if they do improv style music to get to that point, what we're talking about yeah. of you're building on this structure and then you're letting loose and going for it. I don't, is that happen? Do you do that every once in a while when you're jamming with people? Well, <clears throat> so one of the things that I, one of the things that I hate about, uh, about, um, uh, about improvisation is the jam you know, is it and and, you know, we're talking, I mean, I, I definitely respect, you know, the Grateful Dead and and bands like that, that, um, that totally, um, you know, they clearly have this amazing, like technical skill, they know their yeah. shit, right? You know, they're, they're, they're not just like a punk rock band that learned four chords, and you know, is, is, you know, trying to write songs with those same chords. Um, but like, so they're technically proficient, and then they have that ability to improvise or that or that you know the the wherewithal and, and just the, the 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 skills to be able to do that on you know on command but then the the place that i get to after i realize all that stuff is why is their music so shitty you know <laughs> <laughs> you know okay. i get to that i go why why do i not like any fish records you know what yeah you know, fish you know what i mean it's fish like, are terrible it's, but it's, it's terrible I hate yeah. I hate that music. I hate you know. I it's only, it. and and to me it's like I I almost feel like they know too much you know. So they're yeah. bored by things that are that are that are, you know, interesting or e emotionally like powerful to the average person. You know, there, there's the you know the big you know there's the big like major chord songs that you know. On the opposite end of the spectrum, you've got like the church worship band that's playing the same three chords, you know, and you know, trying to just elicit that emotion, and, and it's yeah. just terrible because it's just manipulative and awful. Uh, and, but horrible. then you've got like fish on the other end that are like, you know, they're 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 so bored with anything simple that everything has to have some weird level of complication. In you order don't like to the new thing. Listen, I, I'm right there with you. I, again, I like such a wide range of music that. You know, sometimes I'm in the mood for the dead, but most of the time I'm not. Most of the time I'm in the mood for, you know, pretty angular guitar work. Pretty, buzz <laughs> you know, I'll take the buzzcocks over the dead any day. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I get it. But, you know, just in terms of the, you yeah. know, just in, I, I appreciate that music can do that, right? I appreciate that that, that can happen. Are we gonna are we gonna play the what's the, what's the game? The, the Cooler Lame? Oh, yeah. That? Yeah, we can play some Cooler Lame for sure. For sure. So, uh, so I, I guess I'll just say, uh, you know, um, uh, Jerry Garcia, cooler lame. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jerry Garcia is cool. There, there's, there's not nobody's gonna doubt that one right there. I mean, he is cool. He's not lame. There's uh -huh. never. I mean, all right. <laughs> Wait, oh, I think I think you had said that uh, that you wanted to make like some kind of uh, uh, of an adjustment to the rules of, of the I, game. I have a I have an amendment to cooler lame that's called this or that. 
Oh, really? You get, you get to choose one or the other. Oh, OK. okay. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. one or the other. Do you want me to do that? Yeah, let's, to... let's, let, yeah let's see it. Let's I got it. a few of these. So OK, let's, 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 let's uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give you some softballs first. Yeah. Right, right. Okay. Easy ones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Give you a softball just so you can get the feel of the game. Right? Okay. Okay. So, you know, softball would be like Dodgers or Angels, oh, this or angels. that. Yes, yes, of course. Okay. That's the correct answer. The harder questions are going to be like, like, okay, so let's, let's dig a little deeper then. So what about, uh, you brought up Stone Roses earlier. I know you love, I love Stone Roses too. Mm -hmm. Stone Roses or Happy Mondays? Oh, Stone Roses for sure. Okay. Uh, you know, Happy Mondays, you know, I think a lot of bands at that time were kind of like, uh, they had, uh, some of them had similar style, like Happy Mondays and, um, uh, oh shit, well, um, uh, oh my gosh, I'm just spacing some of the, uh, Charlatans, mm -hmm. uh, you know, some of those, they had, they had kind of that sort of dancey thing going on. Yeah. And uh, the Stone Roses did have a couple of songs on that first record that had that dancey thing, but they were, they were a little bit more, you know, broad in their, you know, so influences. So, and the Here's songs were better. They had they had better lyrics and better, uh, better uh, music. Here's a t here's here's one that I thought about that would be tough for me, would be Jesus or Mary Jesus and Mary Chain or My Bloody Valentine. That would be that's a tough one for me. Yeah. What, what about for you? For me, it's My Bloody Valentine, just because I just I just like those songs a little bit better. Um, I I I love. Jesus and Mary Chain, but um, they uh, they kind of uh, well. What I love about them is they're basically the the new Ramones. You know, they sound the same on every song. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the songs have got like the same stuff going on, and but it totally works and it totally sounds awesome. And I love the Jesus and Mary Chain, but um, but my bloody Valentine seemed to kind of they kind of seem to do a little bit more with what they had. And I don't know, I think the songs just struck me a little bit more for some reason. So I brought up, I brought up Brian Wilson earlier, uh, Beach Boys, for those of you who don't know. Uh, the uh, Brian Wilson or Nick Drake? Ooh, that's an interesting that's one. That's mm. a tough one. You get to but, only pick one. I know, I know, I can only pick one. It's either this or that. This or that. Yeah, uh, I think, um, I'm gonna have to go with. Uh, I think. Oh boy, this is difficult for me because yeah. I I love. I mean, I love Brian Wilson, um, but I love so much of what Nick Drake did. You know. Um, oh boy. Yeah. I think I'm. I think the edge is gonna go to Brian Wilson just because of. Again, kind of like a, a range, you know. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I don't know, uh, and that's a tough one. <laughs> How about, how, how, I'll make an easy one for you. Let's do a baseball one. Garrett Anderson. My man. Or Mike Trout. Oh boy, that's a tough one. <laughs> really? That's yeah. tough, okay. Are you I mean, talking about my man Garrett Anderson? Yeah, I knew you, I, I, I know you love him. Um, so, you know, Garrett, you know, I mean, Mike Trout's probably the best player, you know, and I'm a Dodger fan and I can even admit that. He's the yeah. best player in, yeah, in no, baseball Mike by far. Yeah, no, Mike Trout is is the best player in the, in the league and and the best player I, I've ever seen, you know, in person, of course. Yeah, but you love Garrett Anderson. I do love Garrett Anderson. For some he, reason, he, you love him. I don't know. What's that? I mean, for some reason, you loved his cool, calm demeanor. I love, yeah, I love his cool, calm demeanor. I love the way that he just like was kind of very quiet about like what he did, and he just like just like we're just stroking doubles everywhere and singles and, you know, the occasional home run and, and everything. And he was just <laughs> like, you know, just a rock solid baseball player, you know? Um, Here, here's another hard one for you. This is going to be hard. Uh, Paul Weller, since you brought up the jam and mm. Paul Weller, Paul Weller or Ian McCullough? Ooh, well, let's see. Oh boy. I mean, they're both, obviously amazing Th that's the thing it's this or that they're both great i know it's not cool or lame right right they're both cool yeah which one mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah 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 if you had to pick yeah um hmm wow hmm ah oh, gosh it's really difficult i think oh man this is a really that's a really difficult one for me because <laughs> like the jam was like my you know they were like my favorite band in junior high school for sure 
yeah um them and the like the sex pistols um but then echo and the bunnyman came on strong though echo and the bunnyman came on strong and uh yeah it's that's a tough one uh i think i'm gonna go with i i think i'm gonna go with oh boy i'm gonna i'm gonna go with uh ian mccullough oh wow yeah. even though he's a dick and Paul well, is cool. you didn't say anything about that, about him being a dick. <laughs> <laughs> there was, I, mean, I mean, Paul Weller is a, a certain kind of dick, too, for sure. Yeah. Uh, but but not in the way, did. maybe not in the way that Ian McCulloch is. <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably not. Um, how about, P okay, here, it, let's, I'm going to get in your wheelhouse now. Oh. Pinot or Zinn? Oh, I'm going to go with the Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir. Really? I, I prefer Pinot Noir over Zinfandel, yeah. I mean, Why? Just because the, the, the good Pinot Noir is just, it's like, it's, it's something like, it's, it's, uh, it's a beautiful thing to taste, you know, it's just like a, it's, it's, a, <laughs> it's just, <laughs> what does that mean? It's, it, well, it's just, it's, you know, there's more, you know, I don't know, there's more complexity to it. There's more like, uh, there's a, I don't know, the good, yeah. really good Pinot Noir is just like, it's, it's a really, it's a sublime experience in my mind. Yeah. But good Zinfandel is, is also very good, though. I'm not, I'm not trying to diss it. But, you know. I would drink them both. Of course, I would have a whiskey over both of them, but, <laughs> or a scotch over both of them. But uh, that, that, that's kind of, I, I can't think of any other ones for you. Those are hard ones for you. I figured a couple of those would be hard for you. Yeah, yeah. That's give, me a, give me a cooler lame. Give me, yeah. give me something cooler lame. Well, let's see. Cooler lame. I'm going to say uh, uh, Van Halen. <laughs> Well, if you asked me when I was 16, uh, and I... Well, the rules of school quite... of name is that you, you cannot qualify it. You can't, there's no, you can't like say, well, this is cool, but that's lame. Shit. It's, it's just either cool or else it's lame. Wait, is it David Lee Roth Van Halen or Sammy Hagar Van Halen? Because... The entirety of Van Halen. Oh, shit. Well, then lame because Sammy Hagar ruined it. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's Van... Yeah, yeah. So it's Van Hager or Van Halen. Yeah. Sammy Hagar is ridiculous, dude. I can't listen to that guy ever. Yeah. So. And not, um, what's his name? The uh, the, the guy who, who sang after Sammy is, Hagar. Wait, what? There was a guy that sang after? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there was. Yeah. Yeah, for Ooh. sure. Man. Okay. That's, a, that was an, that's an easy one for me. If it's the entirety of their catalog. I mean, yeah. Diver Down is the only album I like, so. Oh really? Wow, Diver yeah. Down is the only album you like by them? Yeah. Meg Meg and Graham love Van Halen. I'm I'm not a fan. Wow. Oh, interesting. <laughs> okay. I did not know this. I just don't like the leg kicks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not into the leg kicking. I'm not into the you know, I I don't know. It's I can only take like so much the, spandex. You're not into the Diamond Dave? What what uh, I appreciate Diamond Dave. Don't get me wrong. Like, I get it. But I just didn't like all the... He kind of... And I'm not... I don't... Okay, you didn't like... You don't like Grateful Dead noodling. Yeah. Fucking Eddie Van Halen noodling is just as bad, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so we're running out of time, but I want to get to one more thing. Okay. So, so talking about, like, you know, inspirations and, you know... Uh, uh, you know, we were talking about Jackson Pollock earlier, and we saw, we also talked about the Stone Roses, and there's that visual connection where, mm -hmm. you know, uh, what's his name, uh, the guitar player from uh, Stone Roses, you know, was clearly inspired by Jackson Pollock when he made those paintings. They're yes. literal ripoffs of Jackson Pollock. But, um, but for you, you know, uh, so, you know, doing mostly like photography and, uh, and, and multimedia, you know, how, what were your inspirations when you first started getting into it and knew that you wanted to do it? Who were some of the people who were your big, uh, uh, in the art world? Um, so in the art, well, when I was first starting to do it, I mean, again, you know, look, I've been, I've been doing it for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's, so that changes so your, your inspirations, I think, change, you know, could, yeah. You know, you always find and uncover new people. Um, sure. I think the person that I'm closest, uh, you know, the closest photographer that I'm to, uh, uh, I'm connected with is this uh, photographer. He died a couple years ago. His name's Louis Baltz. Hmm. He was a Southern California photographer, California photographer. And, and 
I've actually, many of his photos are me just, many of my photos are me trying to really recreate what he did. Uh, um, homage to him and then also even trying me trying to find some of the places mm -hmm. that he took photos at and trying to find them now oh wow so, so lewis baltz is somebody that's big but you know i i really like john baldessari is probably one of my favorite oh, yeah. mm -hmm. you know all time you know lots of different kinds of art that baldessari's made and he just died recently too kind of one yeah. of them, you know and, and i'm just thinking of la people right now um mm -hmm. There's so many that I could, you know, it's it's hard. It's like, who are your favorite bands? Who are your favorite artists? But um, I think I think over time, those two have influenced me more than anybody else as an artist. Mm. The way I think about as an artist, conceptually, kind of how I how I view art, those two guys. But lots of great photographers. I mean, I you know, I have stacks and stacks of books that I love of people that have influenced me, and it's that could be a whole nother, you know, whole nother show. <laughs> totally uh, yeah totally i know I, I wanted to get into cindy sherman with you uh, yeah i like cindy sherman yeah mm -hmm. yeah i really love her stuff uh it's just such a i mean i guess it's for her it's less about photography and more about her characters yeah yeah but which uh, what's early that? on for me when i was doing a lot of video work as you know i was in a lot of my pieces mm -hmm. And Cindy Sherman was definitely an influence when when I was in my own work. Now there's nobody in my work. My the pieces are empty now, mm. right? It's kind of weird. It's like I went from having me in pieces to now nobody in pieces, and <laughs> there's these vacant. It's vacant. Everything's vacant. Um, so you know, I think that um, you know, it's it's just I, I think I take a little bit from so many you know people that came as an artist. That's what you do. You just pull from yeah. so many people that came before you, and I think that's that's a fun thing about being an artist is that that dialogue that you have with the past, mm -hmm. that dialogue that you and it's same thing with music probably too. That dialogue that you have with the people that came before you and the people that are contemporary with you, mm -hmm. I think that's really cool to have that right mm -hmm. to have that that ongoing conversation with somebody that was alive 70 years ago, let's say. Um, so yeah, we'll have to save that for another conversation. Yeah, that we'll, could do, be, that we'll could do this be. again. We're, we're about to get cut off here. Um, yeah. But, um, but man, thank you so much for, for coming on and thanks for the conversation. <laughs> it's like, we're talking about stuff that some of the stuff we've never talked about before, which is super fun for me, you know, cause yeah. it's like, you know, we get to ask, I get to, you know, tr you know, introduce you to to some different people and and you know, just try to think about like questions to ask that maybe they would want to ask. But um, well, it's it's funny because you and I, you know, we we go to we we th some people probably don't know this, but we go to LAFC games together. We have mm -hmm. season tickets together, and when we're when we're when we're there, we're talking soccer. We're not yeah. really talking music and art. I know, <laughs> I know, it's funny, it's funny. <laughs> Anyway, we're about to get cut off, but thank you so much, my man. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Really appreciate it. We'll do, uh, we'll do this again, um, and I'll be back next week uh, at the same time with hopefully, uh, you know, another, uh, another guest. But, uh, but thank you so much, Curtis. Really appreciate it, my man. Oh, thanks for having me. It was great. See you guys.